what's up beautiful people it's sindaroma welcome to the channel today we have the only battle fought between american soldiers in world war ii the battle of bamba bridge explained also this is a suggestion video and i'm excited to check this one out let's hear what they have to say We've done videos on friendly fire in World War II, Imperial Japan's inter-service hostilities, Ooh. and allied forces such as the Americans and Soviets going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But did you know that two American units fought and shot each other over in Northwest England in June 1943? Wow. This is the story of the so-called Battle of Bamba Bridge, a skirmish fueled by beer and no small amount of racism. Until US President Harry S. Truman issued Executive Order 9981 in July 1948, the branches of the United States Armed Forces suffered from varying degrees of racial segregation. The first clause of the order read as follows. It is hereby declared that there shall be equality of treatment and opportunity for all persons in the armed services without regard to race, color, religion, or national origin. Of course, the order didn't erase racism in the military, and it was put into effect some five years after the Battle of Bamber Bridge. Throughout World War II, some two million American servicemen passed through or were stationed in the UK for a variety of purposes, and they weren't always on the job. They often toured the UK and interacted with its denizens. Many American servicemen married English women and brought them back to America when the war was over. More often than not, African Americans were well received by the British populace, at least at the start. When more racist white Americans poured into the UK, they imposed their a-holery upon the British, refusing, for example, to eat at a restaurant that served black people. According to Roy Ottilie's article, Dixie Invades Britain, which was published in 1942, American observers who were in the UK in 1942 when the first contingents arrived from America saw amicable and smooth relations develop between the Negro troops and their British hosts. So much so that certain white American soldiers became openly resentful, and they lost no time in attempting to discipline the British people. According to an article by historian Joseph Dickinson, the resent was due, at least in part, to the frustration of white American soldiers who saw how open British women were to relationships with black Americans and simply couldn't handle it without chucking a massive tantrum. In the words of author Graham Smith, Many young girls found the blacks fascinating, appreciating their attentiveness and good manners. The United States Army Air Forces, or USAAF, the precursor to the US Air Force, operated out of more than 200 airfields in the UK, each base housing an average of 2,500 men. Among the American units which flew out of the UK was the 8th Army Air Force, and one of the 8th supporting units was the 1,511th Quartermaster Truck Regiment a racially segregated unit composed of African-American soldiers. These men were housed at Air Force Station 569, or more colloquially, Adam Hall in the village of Bemba Bridge in Lancashire, England. Their job was to deliver, via trucks, war material to other air bases in the area. When they were off duty, some of the men enjoyed a pint or two at a watering hole called Ye Old Hob Inn, where they were more than amicable with the local English. When the white Americans started cracking down on this, demanding the establishment of a color bar in the village, the village's three pubs put up signs reading, black troops only. Racism, it seemed, would not be tolerated in Bamba Bridge. Unfortunately, the 234th US Military Police Company, which operated on the north side of the village, were especially sore about the attentive, well-mannered African-American men winning the hearts of Bamba Bridge's women. The MPs had standing orders to arrest American soldiers who were out without a pass, who weren't dressed properly, or who were acting disorderly. On the 24th of June 1943, just days after the race riot back in Detroit, Michigan, they tried to use their power to give the black soldiers of the 1511th a hard time. The consequences were disastrous. While the specifics might vary between sources, the core of the story remains the same. 
possibly because an African-American soldier tried to purchase a beer after last orders had been called, MPs Roy A. Windsor and Ralph F. Ridgway entered Ye Old Hob Inn on the night of the 24th and tried to cite one private Eugene Nunn for being without a pass and for wearing the wrong uniform. Wow. An argument broke out and the locals, as well as British servicewomen of the Auxiliary Territorial Service, sided with Nunn and the 1511th. An unnamed white British soldier also chimed in saying, why do you want to arrest them? They're not doing anything or bothering anybody. The heat increased and one private, Lynn M. Adams of the 1511th, brandished a bottle. In retaliation, Windsor drew his gun. It might have gone down then and there had not a black sergeant by the name of William Byrd managed to defuse the situation. The MPs got into their jeep and were on their way out, but Private Adams was mad and probably a little drunk and decided it would be a good idea to throw his bottle at the jeep. The MPs were outnumbered and chose not to retaliate at that moment. Instead, they gathered some reinforcements and ambushed the men of the 1511th as they were walking back to Adam Hall later that night. Wow. A fight ensued on the road, possibly with the MPs wielding billy clubs. The 1511th fought back with bottles and loose cobblestones. Supposedly to stop Private Adams from hurling a stone at him, MP Carson W. Bosman drew his gun and fired. The bullet struck the private in the neck, but he wasn't killed. The fight soon subsided, and the men of the 1511th made it back to Adam Hall, mostly in one piece. At some point during the chaos, a rumor spread throughout the village. A black soldier had been shot in the back, and the MPs were out on a manhunt. There seems to be a little confusion about what happened next, but the resounding narrative is that a pissed off crowd of some 200 black men rallied at Adam Hall, standing against their white senior officers and calling for war. It's possible they would have stormed the village en masse, but the 1511th's only black officer, Lieutenant Edwin D. Jones, was able to calm them down for the time being. It wasn't long after that, however, that about a dozen MPs drove into Adam Hall in several jeeps and an improvised armored car fitted with a machine gun. This prompted the 1511th to seize about two thirds of the firearms stored at Adams Hall and either take up defensive positions or drive or run out into the night to meet the MPs head on. The locals were instructed to stay inside and over the next three to four hours, a firefight raged throughout the Bamba Bridge area. Mm. A private of the 1511th, one William Crossland, took a bullet and died, while four or five other soldiers and two MPs were injured. It could have been much, much worse, all things considered. Following this mess, two trials were conducted. In the first, four of the African American men involved in the fight in which Private Adams was shot were found guilty of various offenses, dishonorably discharged, and sentenced to hard labor. In the second trial, 28 of the 35 defenders were convicted of offenses such as ignoring orders, failing to disperse, rioting, mutiny, seizing arms, and firing on officers and MPs. They were sentenced to as many as 15 years, but further reviews saw a reduction in these sentences and the release of some of the men. 15 of them returned to duty in June 1944, just in time for the Normandy landings. All in all, the longest period served by any of the men was just 13 months. Again, things could have been much worse. The commander of the 8th Army Air Force, General Ira C. Eker, believed much of the blame fell on the MPs, whose blatant racism inspired the entire affair. The white officers of the 1511th were also largely to blame, as they did a terrible job of trying to pacify the riding men at Adam Hall and also refused to tend to the wounded among them. At least one of them was reportedly drunk. Following the incident, the 1511th and other trucking units ranks were purged of racist officers and black officers were integrated into the MP units. Things got slightly better after that. We're interested to know what you think though. Had you heard of the Battle of Bamber Bridge before today? Why do you think it happened? Lastly, can you think of any similar battles which took place during the war? And shout out to my boy Kamal for suggesting this ages ago. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new. The more I get into this, the deeper and deeper I go. This was quite educative.
I don't even know anything about Bamba Bridge or whatever, but this fight that I feel like it's um quest for power, test for power, just um dominating. Um, but yeah, them dominating. But at the same time, I felt like they they still saw the um black soldiers as um threats. Correct me if I'm wrong. But all the same, this was quite educative to learn about. I mean, I don't want to go into anything talking about race, talking about what color you have on your skin. But I love that I got to check this one out because I never knew about this. I never knew this occurred. But getting to learn this, this just makes it all exciting and interesting to go check more again. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. Comment in the comment section down below what you think about the video, what your thoughts are, and other information that are necessary or that um, you think would, buy, would be really informative in the comment down below as well. And until next time, see you in my next video.